Wife admitted she settled, now what? I didn't mean to read her texts. I know, that's what everyone says, but honestly, it's true. I wasn't snooping. I was looking for the phone charger she always tucks between the couch cushions, and I swear, her phone screen just lit up and there it was I don't know, maybe I did settle for him. For a long time, I just stared at it. I knew I should look away this was a private conversation, one she'd probably delete by the time I'd finished washing up or tossing laundry in the dryer. But her phone stayed unlocked, the message hanging in the air, sinking in like water into concrete. I felt the ache somewhere below my ribs, a physical pain that shouldn't have been possible from just reading words. And as much as I didn't want to, I read the rest. I mean, he's good to me, she had typed out, her words painfully clear, but I thought I'd be, happier. Or at least a little more. Alive? Alive. That word cut the worst. We'd been together six years, married for three. In that time, I would thought we were doing okay. I mean, we laughed together we argued over whose turn it was to do dishes, but I thought that was normal. We did the routine took weekend hikes, posted cute anniversary photos with our arms around each other's shoulders. I never suspected, this. For a moment, all I could think was, how do I even look at her when she comes back in the room? Of course, she chose that exact second to come around the corner with a coffee mug in her hand, eyes flicking over me with a curious smile. Hey, you find the charger? In that moment, the most absurd urge to laugh gripped me, but it wasn't humor it was pure irony. Here I was, standing in our living room with her phone in one hand, the other frozen over the couch cushions, holding this piece of knowledge that felt like it had the weight of a boulder crushing me from the inside. Yeah, I muttered, holding up the charger. I could have told her right then. I could have asked her, what did you mean, you settled for me? But something in me froze. Fear? Or maybe it was just confusion where would I even begin? It felt like I'd stepped into the wrong life, as if the marriage I'd been a part of for the last few years was suddenly unrecognizable. So I didn't say anything. I just, nodded, turned around, and went about the day, letting the words echo and fester. Later that night, she curled up beside me in bed like she always did, one arm thrown over me as she breathed softly. The familiar weight of her, warm against me, made the hurt sting deeper somehow. I wanted to shake her awake and shout, what is it that you wanted? What was supposed to happen after the vows, after we moved into this place, after the Instagram pictures and the weekend getaways? But then I'd picture her face, pale with guilt or, worse, pity. Or even worse relief. So I held onto the silence and let myself imagine her waking up in the morning, only to find I'd turned into someone she didn't settle for. The days passed like clockwork. Every morning, we'd wake up, have breakfast, talk about our days, our plans, our work frustrations. If anyone had asked, they would have thought we were the definition of stable, happy. And maybe in another reality, I would have thought so too. But things were different now. Her touch felt lighter, her laugh felt forced. When we ate dinner, I started watching her more closely. She'd push her food around, sometimes just poking at it, even though it was her favorite dish. When I made small jokes, trying to lift the mood, she'd smile but her eyes would glaze over, like she was somewhere else, already drifting into a life where I didn't exist. Eventually, my mind played with ideas I'd never have considered before. Maybe she'd met someone. Or maybe she hadn't met anyone at all maybe she just needed to leave to feel something, anything, that wasn't me. There was no easy way to say it I was breaking down. And when she finally noticed, I had no words to explain why. Two weeks after reading the text, I couldn't keep it in any longer. The little things started adding up her hours working late, her face buried in her phone at night, the way she laughed just a little too loudly at her friend's jokes when we went out. One night, we were sitting on the couch, some rom-com playing in the background. She was half watching, smiling in that dazed, absent way she always did. The couple on the screen had just kissed, the guy dramatically proclaiming, you're my everything. And maybe it was the absurdity of it, or maybe it was the heaviness of the last two weeks, but something snapped. I laughed. It wasn't even a real laugh it was one of those pathetic, hopeless, hollow laughs that comes out when you're at the edge of your limit. What? She asked, her smile dropping as she turned to look at me. Her eyes were filled with concern. Or was it just curiosity? You really believe in that stuff? I asked, gesturing to the screen. She shrugged, looking slightly caught off guard. Why wouldn't I? I just stared at her, the words right there on the edge of my lips. And before I could stop myself, they tumbled out. Do you think you settled for me? Her face went pale. Just like I'd imagined. I thought maybe she'd laugh it off, maybe brush it aside. But instead, she looked down, her hands twisting together in her lap, her silence saying more than any words could. My stomach dropped. What did you want? I pressed, feeling that pit in my stomach widen. What were you expecting that I wasn't? She took a shaky breath. I don't know if it's you, 
or if it's everything else. She shook her head. I guess, maybe I thought we'd be more. More? I said. I couldn't keep the bitterness out of my voice. More than what? She shrugged, not meeting my gaze. Maybe it's stupid, but I thought I'd feel alive. Not just married, you know? Like I'd have the person who'd make me feel complete. I felt the absurdity, the weight of it all, hitting me square in the chest. Complete? I asked, barely holding back the edge in my voice. I didn't know that was my job. She winced. I know it sounds terrible. I just, I wanted to feel like I had something more. Like, you know how everyone says they meet the one, and it's supposed to change their whole life? I gave a harsh laugh. Are you kidding? This is real life, not some sappy movie. I glanced back at the TV, the couple on screen still locked in some eternal embrace, faces glowing with that magical cinematic happiness that, now, felt like a slap in the face. Her face fell. I know, I know. It sounds ridiculous. But I guess, I didn't know if we'd ever be that. I could feel it now, the crack widening between us. For a long time, neither of us said anything. Eventually, she got up and went to bed, leaving me alone with the empty plates and an aching silence. The next morning, the question haunted me. I'd heard her words, but what now? I went through my day, every interaction tinged with that dull ache, a hundred tiny doubts crowding into every silent moment. When I got home, she was on the couch, a tear-streaked mess, staring blankly at the wall. It took every ounce of energy to cross the room, sit beside her, and ask what we both needed to ask. What do you need, for real this time? I asked. Her answer surprised me. It wasn't romance or passion it was just honesty, the one thing that had slipped away from us in the daily rush. For hours, we talked about the fear of staying and the fear of leaving, about love that doesn't always look like the fairy tale but is love all the same. We both agreed to stay, but something fundamental had shifted. We were no longer together because of some fantasy we were together by choice, accepting that we weren't perfect, but maybe, just maybe, we were enough. Life didn't get easier right away. There were more silences to fill, new gaps to close. But we weren't pretending anymore. And as days turned into weeks, I found myself feeling lighter, more honest, less scared of what wasn't there. We didn't transform overnight, but we started sharing more, building a different kind of love a love that looked less like a fairy tale and more like a commitment to keep growing, even when it hurt. As I looked back on that night months later, it wasn't bitterness I felt. It was gratitude. For all the hurt, we'd learn to see each other again not as saviors or dream fulfillers but as real, flawed people who chose each other, one day at a time. Maybe that wasn't the fairy tale she had wanted. But it was ours.